Over the next 15 minutes, we'll be talking about how to set up the FTB 7000 series OTDR within the Expo FTB 500 platform. So, um, this particular module is the FTB 7400E. It is a 1310-1550 OTDR. Um, your, the interface on your platform might look a little different depending on the hardware you have in there, but to a very large degree, it should be very, very similar. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, uh, the OTDR button down here and launch it. So this will launch the OTDR, and so this is what the default screen looks like. And so we'll come back to this screen. I want to get straight into the setup, so we'll go into setup, and this is where I'll uh, I'll configure my uh, my module and my test. And so for this particular example, I'm going to use feet. Uh, I have about six or seven thousand feet of fiber here with a bunch of uh, connectors. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set feet, but you can do kilometers or miles. In this in this uh, uh, particular test, we'll use kilofeet, and um, you know, the rest of this stuff we, we won't go every sing you know through every single uh, setup item that's in here. Uh, I'll probably do a separate video on just the details of it. Uh, this is just to get you up and running. And so, if you go to mode, this is advanced. And so, when this unit first launches up, it will go into advanced mode, which is where you should be testing uh, under acquisition. Uh, this is we can customize some of the settings here. So over here to the right, you see customize settings. If I'm testing in a pond environment or very short distances, I might want to have the option to uh, to set the, the the display very small. So in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and edit this longest distance, and I'm going to add 500 feet. So now I have a 500 feet uh, setting on my display, and I will show you that. And over here, I'm also going to add a five second averaging time. Some very short spans, we can get away with five seconds. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'll show you where those changes happened. If you have a launch cable or a receive cable, the span start and span end is where you can uh, apply or, or null those out. Down here in fiber settings, index for refraction is the speed of light within that type of glass. So SMF 28, if you look at the white paper specs for that, will have an index of refraction. Um, you know, that, that you can put in here. If you don't know this, just leave it at default. You can go and hit default and leave it there. The helix factor is the twist. So if you adjust either one of these, you actually change the distance measurement. So this is this is important to understand here. Over here to the right, we have the detection threshold. So during the acquisition, we're going to ignore any splice loss or any loss that is .02 dB or better. Uh, that way, it'll clean up the trace. You want you want to have a bunch of false events. And this is, and we have another setting for, for reflection. So a minus 72 or greater of reflection uh, will be ignored as well. And then we also have end of fiber detection threshold. It's set for 5 dB right now, which is the default. If you are testing through a high loss component or device, like say a 1 by 32 pond splitter, a pond splitter, a 1 by 32 has about 14 dB of loss. So I would input a value in here that would be greater than that, so say 20. Typically, I'd want to leave this at default. I'm going to actually set it to 15 during this example because I want to pinch the fiber, which will create some significant loss to show you some uh, some effects. I'll go ahead and apply that. Uh, automation: If you're doing any automated testing, you know, uh, just test over and over and over again. This is more of a production deal, and that's what this tab is for. Cable: uh, This is where you set up your auto naming and your report information. So I'm going to go ahead and set the old, the A location as say central office. You can type whatever you want in these fields, but for the sake of time, I'll just set it uh, at central office and then the um, and a distribution frame. We're going to start at fiber number one. Uh, if you were starting at fiber 145, then you would put that there. We're going to start at one, and then we're going to increment. So every time I hit start, it'll go to the next fiber number. Uh, but if you look at the file name, this is when you save it. This is what it's going to look like, and this doesn't tell us a lot. I'm going to go ahead and click over here to the right. And this is where I can add location A, location B. So now here's what the file name is going to look like. If I wanted to clean that up a little bit, I can add underscores between the information. And so now this is what the trace is going to look like when we save it. I'll go ahead and apply that. Um, the event table here, this is just to include some of the information in the event table. So if you don't want to see some of this information, you can hide it. We'll go ahead and leave it where it's at. Thresholds, if you know what the pass-fail threshold is for your network, for splice loss and connector loss, you can input that. Um, I typically use about 0.25 for splice loss. Um, connector loss, half a dB or better. Reflection, minus 45. This doesn't affect the test. This just sets 
um, past fail thresholds for you. So it highlights those events that exceed these. I normally don't turn on these last four, uh, but these first three I use all the time. So in this example, that's what I'll do here. I'll go and hit OK. OK, so we're back here at the, uh, the main OTDR screen here. So for the sake of time, I'm only going to test at 1550. Uh, here's that 500-foot uh, uh, custom setting that I added, and here's that five-second one that I added. So, so um, you know, I, I find that I'm I'm using five seconds quite a bit, particularly inside like a central office or a head end. So very short distances, uh, I can get away with a very short acquisition time. So, anytime I test with an OTDR, um, I actually test the very first fiber with auto. So I'll, I'll hit auto and, and start to test real quick. And the reason why I do this is I want the OTDR to tell me what it sees. And so once I uh, get to the end point here, I'll go ahead and stop it. Um, it's very important to know what your network looks like. So I know I have about 6,000 feet of fiber, which is what I have here. The auto mode tried setting it at 16,400. I can get away with 8,200, so I'll set it there. That'll move this over to the end here. Pulse width is... Um, is power and distance uh, and, and what I mean by that is as you increase the pulse width you can test further and further but you sacrifice spatial resolution and you increase your dead zone meaning the longer your pulse width um, the more difficulty you're gonna have seeing connectors or events that are close together or close to a connector and, and I'll show that so you want this to be as low as possible but still have a nice clean trace so I'm gonna drop this down to 10 nanoseconds for time I'm going to try five to see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And then you'll see the distance will snap out to 8,200 feet and will fill the screen a lot better. So you want to see the trace, you want to see the end spike, and you want to see the noise. And so we've accomplished that. At 10 nanoseconds, we have a nice clean trace. Um, at five seconds, we're beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and drop it down to five nanoseconds. And basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to see how low I can go with these three settings and still have a nice clean trace that shows my entire span. So at 5 nanoseconds, I still have a pretty decently clean trace here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with this. Um, so normally, like I, again, I would keep dropping the pulse width down until I had um, a noisy trace. If, if at 5 nanoseconds I had a lot of noise here, particularly toward, you know, towards a trailing end is where you'll see it first, um, I'll either increase the averaging time to see if that noise will clean up, um, or I will increase the pulse width um, to clean it up and so typically it's a combination of the two I normally don't test much past 30 seconds anymore um, but in this case here we got away with uh, using 5 nanosecond pulse width and 5 seconds and so again pulse width the shorter the pulse width the better resolution you'll get so right here at event number two I actually have a short jumper here so if I were to zoom into that location there so I'm gonna go ahead and use my zoom at this location here if I were to zoom into this location you see that we have basically two connectors, uh, two reflective events, that's what these are, connectors, uh, very close to each other. In fact, if you look at the distance between event number two and event number three, it is 48 feet. So this is a 48 foot jumper. I can measure both of these, and I have just a little over half a dB for both of these connectors. So I'm able to discreetly measure them and identify them. So this just could be a patch between two tie cables, between two patch panels. At 5 nanoseconds, I'm able to discreetly measure and see these. So here's what happens if you were to increase the pulse width more. And, and so what I mean by that is um, if we were to, if we had a further distance, say we were testing 20 miles, we would need more pulse width. And so we'll, you know, we'll go ahead and increase the pulse width, uh, and then we'll see what it does to the resolution. Uh, we'll also see what it does, in this particular example, it's actually going to be more dead zone. So after every reflective event, we'll zoom back into our favorite connector here. After every reflective event, which is a connector or reflection, we have a section of fiber that we're blind to. And this is what dead zone right here looks like. If I were to go to the measure tab and measure the distance between A and B here, it is 14 feet. So after this front end connector, I have about 14, 15 feet of dead zone. I can see the loss going through that dead zone, but I don't know what's in there. And so I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. I'm going to go to the OTDR. I'm going to increase the pulse width significantly. We'll go to, th we'll go to 100 nanoseconds, which is entirely too much uh, for this span this short. But for, for demonstration purposes, I really want to show you resolution. I'll go to 100 nanoseconds. 
and you'll see it looks significantly different, right? We're certainly launching a lot hotter, so more power. But if I were to zoom into our favorite event over there, if I go to the event table, well, you know what? I, I didn't let it, I didn't give it enough time to analyze. So let's go ahead and retest it again. I stopped it prematurely. So we'll let it go do its full test. Let it populate the event table here, and there it's done that. If I go to event number two here, we'll see this merged event. Um, and so what's happening here is we're not getting the resolution uh, to discreetly separate these two events. So it cannot, it can see that there's two connectors there, but it doesn't know what the loss of those connectors are. Um, and so if I were to zoom into that particular event there, um, let me go ahead and optimize this view a little bit for us. You can see we're not discreetly measuring the two connectors anymore because it's all lumped into one. And this is what happens when um, when you increase the pulse width. Our dead zone now is 171 feet. So everything within 171 feet is measured. And so this is this is really important to understand how this works. And so obviously we liked our five nanoseconds and we'll go back to that. And that gives us a nice clean trace. It separates the um, you know the two wavelengths for us. Or they are the two connectors for us, and we're able to discreetly see those now. Um, it's also very important to test multiple wavelengths. So if I go to 1310 here, and keep in mind 1310 and 1550 are decoupled by default. See, I go back and forth. You see the numbers change. If I wanted to couple, I I click this, and then it would couple these two settings together. I, I normally don't want to do that because 1310 typically uses more pulse width because it's lossier. In this example, it's short enough that they can use the same. So 8,200, 5 and 5, we'll do the same. We'll do a 8.2, 5 and 5, and then we'll go ahead and test. I'm going to go ahead and test using both wavelengths. So it'll spend 5 seconds each and go through. It'll do 1310 first, and here's what 1310 looks like. And then once it's done, it'll go to 1550. And if you see, they're, they're right on top of each other. If this was a fairly long span, 1310 would trail down here more because it's lossier. Uh, but we'll look at event number five here. And so event number five is dot, about a dot three at, 15, at uh, 1310. And at 1550, it is a dot three as well. So I mean, they're, they're right on top of each other for loss. In a perfect world, 1550 would have less loss, right? And so if you look at all of these, that's the way it is. You know, um, it has less loss. Um, or, you know, pretty, pretty close. Anyways, the, the, the attenuation of, of uh, both wavelengths is, is fairly close to each other, um, but 1550 should be better. So I'm going to go ahead and reach over to my fiber connector and, and apply a pinch. So that's what I get. So I got a pinch in the fiber now. I'm going to go ahead and test it. It's going to shoot 1310 first. And this is, I like to show this because I really want you to understand the importance between the two wavelengths, right? And then it'll do 1550 just after it. You can obviously some, see something is happening here. So if I go to event number five, I now have 0.5 dB of loss, almost 0.6 dB of loss at 1310. This probably would not be um, impactful to your network. This is just out of spec. If I go to next wavelength here and go to the same location, I am now 4.5 dB of the loss at 1550. The longer the wavelengths, the more issues you're going to have with pinching. So it's critically important to test at both wavelengths. Uh, that way you can identify fiber management issues. This is not a dirty connector. This is a mismanaged pinched fiber at this location. So you need to go to this location, find that pinch, and resolve it. Because the last thing you want to happen is to leave this in the network. This is a, f this is a 4 dB attenuator right now. If somebody were to go in there and this was on a live system that was balanced to that attenuation, if you were to remove that pinch, you would introduce 4 dB of power into your live system which can cause issues and can cause an outage. And so this is something to, to keep in mind. So it is important to test both wavelengths. And of course, once you're done testing, you would just hit save. And then here's your file auto naming. You hit OK. If I were to start a test, it would test those wavelengths again, five seconds each. And then once it's done, we hit save. Then it would be fiber number five in this case here. And so. I've, I've done a couple of extra tests be between when I did the setup in here. So we went from fiber number one to two, three, four, and five. And so that's all I'm doing. I'm going to hit save, and it'll be five now, and I just keep going. So that's OTDR testing in 15 minutes or less.